Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to make this really simple animation in Blender. We're going to be using Blender 2.8 free in this case. So um, you can see this is it. It's just this little planet and it's really excited and um, I'm going to be making this blend file available on my Patreon. So you guys can check the description below for that. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm also putting a link to that in the description below. So anyway, let's get into it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so first of all, select all of the default objects in your scene. Hit X and then we're going to delete all of these objects. We're then going to go Shift A, we're going to go to our mesh options and in a UV sphere. Once we've done that, we're going to go over to our modifiers tab, add modifier, and let's quickly add in a subdivision surface modifier. We're going to go to our object with this object selected and we're going to make this shades move. Now we're going to go ahead and add in our eyes. So go into your front view and then we're going to go Shift A, go to your mesh options and then we're going to add a torus. Once you've added in a torus, go to object and enable shades move. We're then going to give this torus a subdivision surface modifier. Then we're going to go RX90 and we're going to hit enter. And then we're going to go S to scale it down. So I'm scaling mine down to about here. And then we're going to go G and just move it over to the side. And then we're going to add another modifier. This time it's going to be a mirror. Click on the little eyedropper and select the circle here or the um, sphere. We're going to hit free on our number pad to go into our right orthographic view. We're going to go G, Y and move this out forward, hit 7 on your nowhere pad to go to your top view, and then we're going to go R, just rotate this so it's even with the surface here of our sphere. And we're just rotating this at different angles, moving around just so we have this tucked up nice and tidy against the surface here. Once we've done that, we can go and just add some temporary placeholder colors. So let's click new here. I'm just going to call this yellow. And um, I'm going to come over here to the viewport display and just give this a nice yellow color for now. Select these two eyes, go new. This is called eyes. And for now we can come here to the base color, just make it black. Also come to the viewport display and just make it black. Once we've done that, we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna to go to our um, torus options again, add in a torus. This time we're gonna go R, X, nine, zero. Hit enter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab into edit mode. And we're just gonna hit B and then box select all of these top vertices. We can go X and delete these vertices. Then what we're gonna do is go and shift alt, click on this loop of vertices here, hit F to fill it in and then S to scale it down. Shift alt, click on this loop of vertices here, F to fill it and an S to scale it down. And then tab out of edit mode, go to object, enable shades move. And what you could also do, just quickly go back to edit mode, hit A to select all of the vertices. Then you can go um, alt S or um, shift alt s and just smooth that out so if you go shift alt s you can just smooth that out a little bit so just like that and once you're done with that you're going to go into your object mode and then you're going to go g and move this guy forward and then s to scale it down in fact you can even go into edit mode and just move this guy up to its origin point that little orange dot there so it's nice and in the middle and then essentially we're just positioning this just like we did with our eyes and you can make the scale of this as much as you want but i'm just creating this cute little mouth that sits right here also going to give this guy a subdivision surface modifier go to my materials tab and give this guy that eyes material and this is personal preference so i'm just going to go with a cute little mouth like this okay so that's looking really good and to save a little bit of time i'm just going to grab this circle um the sphere over here I'm going to go shift D to duplicate it. Just move it up here and then S to scale it down to about here. Get rid of this um, yellow shader, go new and just call this material moon. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this mouth here, go shift D to duplicate it. And we're going to move it up to the moon here, go S to scale it down even more and make sure to place it nice and snug up against this surface here. We're then going to select the moon itself. We're going to go shift D to duplicate and S to scale it down. Come over here to the materials and give it that eyes material and then just move it over here. So place it where you want it to be and we're going to give this guy a mirror modifier. Click on the little eyedropper and select the moon here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select this object here holding in shift select the mouth. Holding in shift still we're going to select the moon. We're going to go control P object keep transform. So now we've parented these objects to that surface. So if we move it around. I'm going to do the same thing here. So select the eyes, holding in shift, select the mouth, and then still holding in shift, select the big sphere. 
going to go control P and object keep transform. So now this guy is parented as well. Okay, so that's looking really good. So let's add in our rings. So we're going to go shift A, go to our mesh options, add in a torus again. This time we want to come down to our torus settings and we want to come to the minor segments and just bump that up a few times and also come here to the major segments and just bump that up a few times. So I'm going to take mine to 70 and just minimize this. You want to tab into edit mode and you're going to go Alt S and you're just going to scale this with Alt S, make it small, tap back into object mode and then go S to scale this out to about here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tab into edit mode and with all of these vertices selected, we're going to go Shift D to duplicate and then S to scale. And then we're going to hit Shift R once. Oh, okay, so not forget about Shift R, just go Shift D again and then scale. Shift D and then scale. So we're going to create five of these. So just one more Shift D and scale again. And you can see they're getting bigger as we scale out. So what we can do is just, if you select any vertice on one of these rings and you go Control L, it'll select all of the vertices and then you can go Alt S and just scale it in. And I'm just going to create, grab every second ring. Just go Alt S, make it a bit thinner. And this is completely up to you. I like to have them all a little bit different. So just something like that. That looks really cool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give this some material. So just go to object as well and disable shades move. You go to your modifiers, just give this guy a subdivision surface modifier. And now we can go to our materials tab. We're going to click on the little plus here. Create a material, let's call it green. And let's go to the viewport display and just make it green. Then we're going to hit the plus over here, go new, and let's call this pink. Let's go down to our viewport display and just make that pink. And let's create some more. Let's call this one purple. Go down to the viewport display and just make that a purple color. What am I doing? Purple. Right there. And go up, create another material. Let's call it orange. And we're just creating um, these materials here. Very simple. And um, let's create one more and um, let's just call it blue. Make a nice blue material. Let's make it like that. So now we're just going to tab into edit mode. And what we can do is select the ring that you want to add the color to. So for example, I can select the vertice here, go control or command L. And then I'm going to make this one pink. So I'm going to go assign. I'm going to select this guy over here. I might make it a purple. So I click on a purple and go assign. I'm going to select this one on the outside, control L. Maybe I'll make it blue and I'll assign that. And I'm just adding these different colors and I might make this one an orange. So now I've assigned different colors. That looks really cool. And now what we're going to do is do some really basic um, animating. So what I like to do is first of all, grab this ring and just go G, Z and just bring it down a little bit down to here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode. We're going to hit A to select all of these vertices. And in our top orthographic view, we're going to go G and we're going to move this over this way a little bit. So just over to this corner here, just a little bit, tab out of edit mode. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into our um, into our properties panel by hitting N on our, on our keypad. And then we're going to go here to the item. And we're going to come down here to the rotation. And we want to make sure we are on frame one. So make sure this little slider is on frame one. Hovering over this rotation value, we're going to hit I. That's going to insert a keyframe for all of these vectors. We're then going to come to frame 50 and on frame 50, we're going to take the Z value here. We're going to type in 360 and we're going to hit enter. And then hovering over here, we're going to hit I to insert a keyframe. We're going to come here to our end values and make the end value 50. So now we only have 50 frames here. And what's going to happen here, if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar to play this, we can see the rings are kind of going around like a hula hoop, but it's easing in, easing out because the Bezier curve. So just select it, click on here and just select both of these keyframes. Hit the T key on your um, keypad and make it linear. So now it's going to be a linear um, animation cycle. So that's looking really good. And now what we're going to do is just grab this guy, come over to frame zero or frame one. And we're just going to go G to move it over here. And then we're going to go I to insert a location key. We're going to come to frame 50 and we're going to also go I and insert a location key in the same position. We can then come to frame 25, or 24, round about there, and then we're gonna go G and move this guy over here a little bit. Then we're gonna go I and insert a location key. So it's gonna look 
like it's kind of hula hooping around here and it just looks kind of really cool. Very simple animation as well. And then what we can do is we can go shift A, we're gonna to go to our empty, add in a cube, and we're just gonna to go to frame one and we're gonna select this um, sphere over here, holding and shift select the rings. And then holding and shift, we're gonna select the empty and we're gonna go control P, object, object and keep transform. So now this is all parented to that. We can also select this little moon and holding and shift select the um, empty, go control P and go to um, object, object, keep transform. Now if we grab this empty, everything should go along. That's really good. You can hit N now to take down that properties panel over here. We don't need to see it anymore. And now we're gonna add in a camera. So we're gonna go to our front view, we're gonna go shift A, add in a camera. I'm gonna grab, go G, Y, and just move it back a bit. Go to your camera settings, make the type an orthographic. Come over here to your output settings, and we're gonna make the Y resolution 1920. Hit enter. And I like to make the percentage here um, 70. Just It's gonna make it a bit smaller, but it will render faster in the animation. And then if you hit zero, you can go into your camera view. And here we can see this is our view, but we wanna change things up a little. So we're gonna select this empty, and in our camera view, we're gonna double tap R, and that's gonna rotate it. And you can also just hit R by itself. And we're just gonna get a kind of a position that we like. And you can see our little dude here is not looking in the position we want, so we can just grab this and double tap R and just rotate them up a little bit and rotate them to the side. So now that's looking a lot better. And also, let's just grab his eyes here. Let's just click on a, um, Object Data Properties, go to the Shape Keys, hit the little plus twice. And with the key one selected, we're gonna tab into Edit Mode. And with this loop selected, we're gonna go S, Z, and scale it down on the Z. And then we're gonna go Shift Alt S, or just Alt S, to thicken that up a bit. Tab back into Object Mode. Now we have a slider here we can use to make a blink. So I'm just gonna come to Frame one on frame one, I'm going to make this value zero. I'm going to hit I to insert a keyframe. Then I'm going to come to frame ten. I'm going to hit I to insert a keyframe. Then I'm going to move up one, um, two frames. I'm going to drag this value up to one, and I'm going to hit I to insert a keyframe. Then I'm going to move up two more frames and bring it back down to zero. Hovering over it, I'm going to hit I to insert a keyframe. Now, with these eyes still selected, we can select these three keyframes. So we can go Shift D to duplicate them and drag them wherever we want. So I'm gonna drag them about here. So now we're gonna get these nice little blinks every now and then. Now if they're too fast, you can always grab them, come in here and just select the end keyframes of these sets of three and just move them out a little bit and it'll look a little bit more natural. So that's looking really cute. You can do the same thing with this moon up here, but I'm just not gonna do it. Um, but you guys saw how I just did it. So what we're gonna do is also Come to frame one and with this moon selected, we're gonna hit I to insert insert a location and rotation key. And we'll come to frame 50 and we're gonna do the same thing. I insert a location and rotation key. And then we can come here to frame 20, double tap R and make him look a little bit this way. And we're gonna go I insert location and rotation key. And you can come to frame 35, G and just move him a little bit and go I insert a location and rotation key. So we're just creating this kind of like a little bit of a, kind of like he's getting pulled around by the gravity of this um, planet a little bit. It doesn't look that fantastic, but it's an animation. You guys can spend as much time as you want with it. But um, I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. So now we can um, just add in a backdrop. So I'm gonna go Shift A, add in a plane. Just scale that up. G, Z, and bring it down. Tap into edit mode and then select these two vertices at the back. Go into your right orthographic view. You can go E to extrude it. And I'm just hitting E and moving it like this. Tab into object mode again, and then go into your camera view. And you can go to object, enable shade smooth with that plane selected, and also give it a subdivision surface modifier. Now at the moment, we can also scale it up if we need to. And we can grab our camera here, go to our right orthographic view, and just rotate it down a bit and move it up just so we get something that we like. Um, and if you want to zoom in and out, you got to use this orthographic scale. So that's looking really, really cute. So now we can um, also just grab this backdrop selected. We can go to our materials tab, go new, and I'm just going to call this BG for background. And I'm going to go to viewport display and just make this guy kind of like purple, maybe a bit lighter. 
and uh, we'll see what we can make with this in our materials and our um, with our lighting setup and stuff. So this is all the modeling and animation done, and it's also loopable, so it'd be a really cute little um, GIF or something. Okay, so first of all, what we're gonna do is um, just you could just drag this down, if, give yourself a bit more space. So we're gonna go to our render settings here. Make sure we're in the EV render engine. It works fine for this, and we're gonna go to the ambient occlusion, enable that, and also enable screen space reflections. That's simple. We're done with that. We're gonna go Shift A, go down to our light options. We're gonna add in an area light. I find that area lights work really well for this. We're gonna go G, Z, and bring that area light up to here. Go to your light settings, just click on that guy there and increase the size to five. And we're gonna increase the power. Now the power is up to you. Um, mess around with it. Um, if you feel it's underlit, you can increase the power. If you feel it's too bright, bring it down. So gonna go to your right orthographic view and then go R to rotate it. Rotating mine out to about here, then G to move it. I'm placing it right here. Going to my top view, then rotating it like this. And I'm just creating a three point lighting setup. So I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate this and then I'm rotating it this way. You can hit zero to go into your camera view and then go Z and then go rendered. So I can see this is what my lighting is looking like. Okay, so that's good enough for now. So I'm just gonna select the planet here. Go to the shading, go into the camera view by hitting zero and then once again, Z and make sure you're in the rendered view, um, viewport display. Then um, obviously we're gonna select the, this object first and with that yellow material that we created, um, we're going to go ahead and just make it yellow, like this. Make the roughness um, a little bit less, so it's a bit more reflective. And we're going to grab the eyes here, and we did give it a black color, but I'm going to make it a little bit more black, and bring the roughness down on that a bit as well. Now we can select the rings over here, and um, what we can do is just click on the materials tab here, and let's start with the green. So the green needs to be a green material, like this. The pink needs to be pink. The purple, this is all very self-explanatory, I shouldn't even explain it. Orange, make that orange. And then lastly, it's just like this blue and I'm gonna go with blue like this. So there we can see we have these um, materials, these shaders, they look quite nice. I'm gonna select the floor here and this is personal preference, but I'm gonna make mine metallic and bring the roughness down a bit. And then I'm just gonna make it a light kind of Maybe a purple or pink. This is totally up to you. Um, bring that metallic value down a bit, bring the roughness down, make it a bit more reflective. So this is where you have to kind of come in and make it your own. But um, I'll just go with this for now. And then we'll select the moon here and I'm just gonna make that a nice gray material. You could totally add a texture to this or a Veroni for some bump to make some little craters. But I'm gonna keep this tutorial basic and um, make it a little bit more matte, so I'm gonna make it a little bit less reflective, unlike this guy over here. And that is very stylized, so it's not meant to be like physically accurate in any way. So um, yeah, that's looking really good. I might grab this light here and go Shift D, create one at the back here, bring it in a bit. So get some of that lighting from the back there. And uh, that looks good. So let's just quickly give that a test render. And there we have it, that is what it's looking like. I think that just looks really good for the amount of time we put into it. And it's a cute little loopable GIF or something you could make for somebody. So I'm gonna show you how we can render this out as a final animation. Go back to your layout. And uh, all you have to do is simply go to your output settings, click on this little folder in your output. I like to select my desktop, it's just nice and convenient. So that's where it's gonna be exported out to. File format, you can make this an FFmpeg. If you wanted this to be video sequences, you can just leave it as an MP and a PNG and then just compo um, composite it together in After Effects or whatever, but I just prefer to do it right out of Blender for little projects like this. So select FFmpeg, go to your encoding, and I'm just gonna make the container an MP4peg. Once again, you can choose some of these other options here, but MP4 is just one of the better ones for what you get. And um, it's not too slow as well, it's pretty quick. And that's about it. So we can go File, make sure to always save before you render out. And then we're gonna click on render and you're gonna click render animation and it'll render this out for you. And um, that'll be your final result. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want this blend file, it is available um, on my Patreon and you guys can totally go and check out some of the stuff I've been doing. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for all your support.